after understanding the various techniques and methods of doing product portfolio analysis, a business needs to formulate strategies for their entire organization, which will help it to achieve the goals and the objectives. Now, a business can achieve its goals and objectives by developing a strategic vision, setting objectives about which we understood in chapter two. And in this chapter, we're going to understand the third point in this flowchart, which is crafting a strategy to achieve the goals and objectives. As we understood earlier in chapter two, a strategy is nothing but a tool to achieve my set goals and objectives. Now, after crafting these strategies, we need to go ahead with implementation and monitoring of these strategies about which we're going to understand in chapter five and six. So going ahead with chapter four, there are various strategies that a business can adopt. Majorly three types of strategies. Now the best cost product strategy that you can see the second is one alternative. Now mainly the chapter consists of Michael Porter's generic strategies, grand strategies by William Gluegg and Lawrence George, and defensive strategies. So it majorly consists of these three types. Now let us just try to understand Michael Porter's generic strategies, which are cost leadership strategy, differentiation strategy, and focus strategy. Now we will take a few examples to understand these strategies here itself. Say for example, Bajaj, which is into making two-wheelers follows a cost leadership strategy because it is into optimum utilization of resources, it is into full utilization of capacity, it is into forward integration and backward integration and thus what it will do is it will try to keep its cost as low as possible obviously providing a quality product because of which it has an edge over the competitors in terms of the price and thus it tries to become a cost leader so that even if the business has to reduce the cost price I'm sorry the selling price it can do so because the cost price has been kept as low as possible due to efficiency now, thus what a business will try to do is it will become a cost leader in the market and cost leader will have a majority of the market share. Now, taking an example of a differentiation strategy followed by a business is where a business will distinguish itself from the other players in the market by doing something new, unique, creative. And it may charge a premium price for the product as well. Here I like to take an example of Honda. Bajaj, which is a cost leader, will sell a bike at a price way below what of what Honda sells. If you compare 100cc bikes of both Bajaj as well as Honda, we will observe a great difference in the price. Honda on the other hand tells us that it manufactures products of superior quality. So people don't mind paying a premium price which the, the business demands certainly. So cost leadership strategy will be followed by a business which wants to have an edge in terms of the pricing of the product. Certainly it is implied that the quality will be up to the mark. But if people think that there is a product which has some uniqueness, which has some USP, that is a unique selling proposition, people don't mind paying a little more. And such businesses are adopting a differentiation strategy. The example that we just took Honda. Now regarding focus strategy, a business will go after a small group. Now businesses that follow cost leadership strategies and differentiation strategies cover up majority of the market share. And the remaining market share which these two types of strategies uh, which the businesses are following. Now whatever these businesses are not focusing on are focused by companies which are into selling products to only a certain group of consumers. Now since we took an example of two wheelers, in cost leadership strategy there will be Bajaj, in differentiation strategy there will be Honda and in focus strategy there will be Ducati. 
Ducati only makes high-end bikes. Now, one of the recent bikes it has made is Ducati 1200cc Multistrada, which it sells around 25 lakh rupees. So there it goes purely after one small group of consumers, which are the target audience. So Bajaj and Honda cover up majority of the market share and whatever is left out, either the extremely low end segment or the extremely high end segment is covered by businesses following a focus strategy. So I hope we have a clear understanding of what these three strategies are. And we can just take a look about the details of differentiation strategy and the focus strategy in the slides to come. So as per differentiation strategy, a firm can create special features into the product which are demanded by the customers. And because customers get something as per their specifications and customization, they are willing to pay a little more. And as per the focus strategy, you know, if we can see in the pie chart, which is towards the right of the screen, right top of the screen, the market leader will have a majority of the market share. The challenger will be followed by the follower and the niche segment is nothing but businesses which adopt a focus strategy. So a, a business adopting a focus strategy will go after the niche segment. Niche in simple words refers to a small segment or a small group of consumers. So I hope we have a clear understanding of those three strategies. Now the next strategy is called grand strategy or directional strategy. Now in this strategy what happens is we understand two basic things intensification and diversification. Now under intensification and diversification Intensification covers three aspects of Igor and Soft Matrix. That is existing products sold in existing market, which is market penetration. New products sold in existing markets, which is market development. And existing products sold in a new market, which is market development. And diversification covers four basic things. Horizontal diversification, which means entering into those businesses which are at the same level in the chain. Now, we understood about vertical diversification, which was nothing but backward integration and forward integration, whereby under backward integration, I go backwards in the chain of distribution, which means I go backwards, that is to have control over the cost of my raw materials, I may enter into the business of my raw materials itself. And forward integration will refer to going ahead in the chain of distribution, which means if I'm into supplying of only raw materials, I may start retailing. Now, This is to combat the bargaining power of suppliers and consumers respectively. Now going sidewards in the chain of distribution is nothing but horizontal diversification, which includes acquiring businesses which are into the similar products or services as my business or entering into similar lines of business. Now, for example, if Bajaj starts making steel and other metals which are used in the spare parts, which obviously it makes on its own, that will be an example of backward integration because the raw materials will be metals for its spare parts. And Bajaj opening up its own service centers for servicing the vehicles that it sells will be an example of forward integration. Now, Bajaj is also into insurance. Bajaj is also into Bajaj finance. Now, this is nothing but an allied business, which is neither backwards nor forward, but sidewards, which is an example of horizontal diversification. So, I hope we are clear with horizontal and vertical diversification. Now, concentric diversification is simply what MT Educare is into. The products are interrelated and the same facilities can be used for manufacturing multiple products. MT Educare is only into educational products, which is nothing but concentric diversification where the products are closely connected. 
On the other hand, conglomerate diversification will refer to such a diversification where one facility cannot be used to actually come up with products which the business is into. For example, MT Edu Care is into providing education to the junior college students that is 11th and 12th. And the same classrooms that are being used to coach the students of 11th and 12th standard can be used to coach students pursuing CA or CS or MBA entrance exams or TYBCOM or TYBMS. Now, this will be an example of concentric diversification. I'd like to take an example of ITC, which is Indian Tobacco Corporation Limited, which is a conglomerate organization and its diversification is conglometric diversification, whereby we can just list down a few of the products it is into. Uh, two of the main businesses that it is into is cigarette making and luxury hotels. Now, these two businesses have no direct connection with each other. Now, these two have no direct connection with Sunfeast Biscuits. These three have no direct connection with Ashirvad Atta, which is wheat flour. Now, these four have no direct connection with its stationary business under the brand name Classmate. And these have no connection with its range of personal care, which is Fiamma de Wills and Vivel. So, this type of diversification will be a conglomerate diversification. And three other strategies that we need to understand here in the grand or the directional strategies is a stability strategy, an expansion strategy, retrenchment strategy, and combination strategy. Now, what we just understood, intensification and diversification is a part of expansion. Stability strategy is a strategy where a business will not do anything new and continue to prevail in the same markets, sell the same products. It will try to do a little bit of market penetration and no other new stunt as such in terms of expansion or diversification or growth as such because of probably a hostile or uncertain business environment. So it wants to wait and watch till the time it gets clarity of what exactly to do and how to go ahead. Now, expansion strategy is nothing but what we are seeing on the slide. Retrenchment strategy is something that we're going to discuss in just some time to come. And a combination strategy will be a combination of either of the two or three. Now, a simple example of a combination strategy will be where MT Edu Care, which was earlier into preschool coaching, which is the playgroup and nursery under the brand name Little Tigers, it gave off that business and it got out of that business and obviously the money that came from there was invested in its current business. So if we have to take an example of selling of that business, that will be a retrenchment strategy. Retrenchment in simple words means taking a back foot in terms of business. Now this is not always because the business is not doing well. If it feels that a product or a business unit has become a dog as per BCG matrix, a business will obviously adopt a retrenchment strategy. And the earnings that it gets out of selling that business unit or after getting out of that product that it is into currently, it will certainly make sure that those funds are diverted to its main existing business, which is nothing but an expansion. So this will be an example of a combination strategy. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, retrenchment is nothing but when I take a back foot. So I either reduce my product line or I close down the poor divisions because the situation is a little adverse and hostile. So I reduce my advertising, I reduce the executive perks. Now perks are nothing but the perquisites, the additional facilities apart from salary and remuneration that employees get. I may even with withdraw from a few markets. So this is nothing but retrenchment where I take a back foot in terms of my business. Now, divestiture is nothing but divestment. One nice example that I'd like to take here is 
an example of Centaur Hotel. Centaur Hotel was owned by the government of India. The Hotel Corporation of India owned Centaur Hotel. There were two Centaur Hotels, one near the airport and one in Juhu, which is an area in Mumbai. And the airport, obviously I'm talking about the Mumbai International Airport. Now, Centaur Hotel in the year 2000-2001 was sold, both the Centaur Hotels were sold under the divestment scheme which was a part of privatization, that is liberalization, privatization, globalization, a part of the new industrial policy 1991. Now that will be an example of divestiture, divestment. So they sold off Centaur Airport, which is now Sahara Star, and Centaur Juhu, which is now Tulip Star. So this will be an example of divestment, whereby a business will sell a division or a part of a business when it requires cash or if it feels that that part of the business or product is a misfit in the business. Now, if a business is still not doing well, what it can do is turn around. Turn around is a difficult but not an impossible strategy. Turn around is required by those businesses which are sick units as on date, which have become loss-making businesses. Now, Havels India Limited faced a bad phase in the year 2007, whereby it recorded a loss and it had a loan of several million euros. So, combat to that, what it did was a complete turnaround strategy. So, it sold off a few business units, it closed down a few uh, a few of the operations running in various countries. Havels laid off a few employees, obviously following the labor laws, because of which there was no unrest among employees. And after doing all these things, in just two years down the line, which is 2009 and 10, it recorded profits. Uh, this is nothing but an example of turnaround. Apple Incorporated also faced a bad phase in the year 1995 and 1996 with Mr. Steve Jobs, the then CEO, being removed by the board of directors. So this is nothing but a turnaround strategy where a business will improve the internal efficiency in the first place. It will try to convert a loss-making business into the profit-making business and try to bring it back to its former glory. And this may also require a change in the top management because only if the engine is strong enough, it can pull off a train. And it, it needs to take credibility building actions because of the loss of reputation that may have taken place. And it needs to identify the quick payoff activities of revenue generation, which means it needs to divert its attention, its funds to that part of the business, which is a star. So turnaround strategy in simple words, means converting the loss-making business and trying to bring it back to the profit-making business that it was at one particular point in time. Now, under what conditions turnaround is suitable or turnaround should be done? Negative cash flows, foreign profitability, decline in market share, overmanning. Overmanning refers to appointing more employees than required because of which this becomes a burden to the company. High employee turnover, which means the number of employees leaving the company and going is high. This is also referred to as high attrition rate. Low morale, the sense of belongingness of the employees with the organization is a little low because of which a business may need to do turnaround or if there is mismanagement or uncompetitive products. So under these circumstances, a business needs to do turnaround. And the last option available with a business is liquidation. Now, a business, if unsuccessful to do a turnaround, it should try to merge with some other company whereby it will still retain its identity to some extent. Now, under liquidation strategy, what happens is a business will formally close down, which means it will wind up. So the way there is a formation procedure, there is also a closing procedure under which it will sell its assets, it will accept the fact that 
it has been defeated by the competitors and no other strategies work and that is the reason why a business will adopt a liquidation strategy and before it becomes bankrupt it is advisable to liquidate the business whereby there is still some kind of an honor and grace with which it will leave and as the famous saying goes that applause when you enter is not as important as remembrance when you leave so there should be a remembrance in the minds of the people that there was this company which at one particular point in time was doing good in the business so this liquidation strategy is another strategy which is an undesirable strategy for a business to follow now for following these strategies as we understood in the earlier chapters that there has to be an involvement of all the levels of management which means we're talking about the corporate level the business level and the functional level that is the top level the middle level and the lower level of management now a top down approach simply means that the strategy formulation will take place at the top level management and will be communicated to them and they have not much of suggestion or recommendations that can be given because it is more of an imposition and a bottom up approach is basically where the operational level or the functional level or the lower level of management will give its suggestions its recommendation its opinions to the top level management and thus strategies will be formulated so a top down approach is very similar to vision shared that we understood in the second chapter and a bottom up approach is very similar to shared vision which we understood with vision shared in the second chapter so top down approach is similar to vision shared and bottom up is shared vision